All right, welcome back everyone. So this week we're going to be looking at a range of financial topics. And so we're going to be taking a look at Salesforce, which has acquired Slack in full. We've also got the Nikola founder, Trevor Milton, who has been charged with securities fraud. So take a look at that as well. And then finally onto Lloyds Banks. And so they have resumed their dividends and we'll take a look at their profits as well. Now, for those of you that are new to the channel and unaware exactly what I do, I focus on both growth-based dividends, which you can see on my screen at the moment, and also dividend-based investment, which is held in my ISA account. And you can probably see within my growth-based account that I don't actually hold Slack anymore. In fact, if I try to search, it's not even possible to see an option available. And that's because Salesforce has acquired Slack. So we can see that the CEO and co-founder, Stuart Butterfield, will still be leading Slack, but Salesforce is now the parent company. As a result, for anyone that owns shares in Slack, that money would have been available in cash only. But all in all, we can see that I only held two shares in Slack, but it was still a healthy profit. And since then, I've actually brought into Salesforce itself. And so just taking a look at this cycle here, we can see that Salesforce has completed the acquisition of Slack Technologies. It's taken about eight months to complete since the announcement. Now, whenever we have these acquisitions, we sometimes see the platform itself being left as is, or we start to see some technology that perhaps Salesforce had, which is then integrated into the Slack platform. Just taking a look at what the CEO of Salesforce, Mark Benoff, has stated, we couldn't be more excited to have Slack as part of the Salesforce family, combining the CRM and the digital platform for the Work Anywhere world. Together, let's define the future of enterprise software, creating the digital HQ that enables every organization to deliver customer and employee success from anywhere. And so now if you want to invest in Slack, you now have to invest in the broader picture. As I mentioned, I've now brought into Salesforce, so we can see currently they are at $244 at the time of recording. In the future, I'll dedicate a single video to Salesforce and all the benefits. But overall, this is a great company, and so it'll be interesting to track the future progress. Now, moving on to the previous CEO of Nikola, Trevor Milton was removed from his position at Nikola, which was back in September of 2020, effectively because of a lot of lies that were told with respect to their product. Now, Nikola is actually still trading on the stock exchange. We can see the decrease in the stock price. And so at the moment, you can buy this company for around the $12 mark. And so there's been charges made against him for securities fraud. Let's take a look at exactly what that means. And so he allegedly lied to investors about the business, ranging from how the commercial trucks were powered and also the alternative hydro fuel that was being used. And so we have a statement from the US attorney. In order to drive investor demand for Nikola's stock, Milton lied about nearly every aspect of his business. And we can see that Milton has pleaded not guilty to the charges and has been released on a 100 million bond. And so we'll take a bit of time to see what the result is, whether there's going to be a fine or whether there is a prison sentence. And so we'll definitely take a look to see what happens to Trevor in the future. But equally leave a comment in the comment section below if you want to have a dedicated video on Nicola. And so moving on to the final topic of Lloyds Bank, this is more dedicated towards those dividend investors out there. And I personally still hold on to my Lloyds shares. And that's been a while ago since I last spoke about Lloyds. And at the time I was unhappy with the progress of the company, also the stock price and also the fact that their dividends were not resumed. But we can see since then, if I just switch over to my ISA account, searching for Lloyds here, we can see that we have a current price of 46 pence. And so from a price point, it's looking a lot more healthier. Let's take a look and see what the dividend price is. So just going through the article here, we can see that there's been an interim profit, which has reported a pre-tax profit of 3.9 billion, and they've set aside 837 million for what they quote bad debts. And most importantly, their net income has risen to 2%. So that's at 7.6 billion. So we have a share dividend declaration of 67 pence. And that restriction was partially lifted back in January and fully removed back in July. And so those lost provisions have been reallocated, leading to a half year gain of 656 million. So overall, this company has been sensible with their money allocation, given the backdrop of the pandemic, but we can see that looking ahead 
for 2021, there's an improved macroeconomic outlook, and so there is no need to hold on to cash reserves, and equally, we now have those dividend payouts. Now, obviously, fuel in this, we have the property market that has been increasing. Lloyd's is a bank provider that provides mortgages, and so there's been more demand for people borrowing money. And we can see that for Lloyd's, their biggest month for mortgage completions was in June. The last time that occurred was back in 2008. And then separately to these increase in dividends, we can see that Lloyd's is buying Embark Group, which is an investment and retirement platform business. Now, Lloyd's isn't the only company that has been paying out their dividends. There's a range of other banks that have been paying them as well. So from a dividend investor point of view, this makes it more attractive when you invest. But of course, the stock price has been increasing off the back of this news. And so with the increase of 67 pence, let's just take a look at what this means for a dividend yield. So we're looking at around 1.22%, it's not that great. In the past, this was around 5%. And so that's one thing to be aware of that this is no longer a high 5% dividend yield that this company once was. We can expect some increases in the future though, given that they've decreased this quite dramatically. And so that's just another point to be aware of with a lot of these bank companies, whether they reinstate the dividend or whether they pull it at a reduction or not. So thanks for watching everyone. New videos are posted each week. I always listen to the comments below. So if you have any feedback on different videos that you want to see in the future, there's always a high probability that I record a video based on your suggestions. For all those new subscribers, welcome aboard. And for anyone who hasn't subscribed, then definitely recommend you do so. So thanks again everyone for watching. And with that said, I'll catch you in the next one.